Norman Satoran is the executive director of the Canadian Judicial Council, and he joins us from our Ottawa Bureau as well right now to talk further about this. I understand, Mr. Satoran, that you can't speak to the specifics of this case, but that aside for the moment, what process is used then to assess a complaint such as this? Well, in all cases, uh, the Canadian Judicial Council is very cognizant that the public expects uh, from their judges highest standards of conduct. Whenever there's a, an allegation that is made against a judge, whether it's in uh, writing or whether it's um, against a, a uh, federally appointed judge uh, while in, in on duty or before they were appointed to the bench, we look into the allegations very seriously. There is a process of review that uh, involves the peers of the judge, namely the chief justices of this country. And in this particular case, while I can't talk about the details, I can tell you that as soon as the CJC was aware of the comments my, made by the judge, we initiated a review of the matter to find out exactly what has taken place, and that review will unfold uh, under the direction of a chief justice on the Canadian Judicial Council. Last hour, law professor Alice Woolley, who was one of those who I believe put forward the complaint uh, related to this case, spoke to CBC News Network. Here's what she had to say to us about her expectations for this review. I think that the Canadian Judicial Council needs to look at this case carefully. They need to look at the transcript. They also need to look at his conduct in the bench as a judge more generally and they need to make a determination as to what will restore public confidence in the legal system. So to her point, how fulsome is the review? Does it focus on this one particular complaint or one particular case or does it take a look at a wider body of judgments that he has rendered? Well, again, I can't get into the specific details of this case, but uh, Professor Woolley mentioned public confidence, and that is the really the raison d'être, the very reason the council exists, is to ensure that the public has confidence in the members uh, of the judiciary. So in any case, including this one, we will very thoroughly investigate what has unfolded. We will go to the sources. We will uh, find out exactly uh, what was said, at uh, what time, and uh, what circumstances. If there's any pattern to be discovered, we will find out what that pattern is. So and very, to that very point, importantly, we will that, go to the, the judge. No, pardon me, on that yes. point, can I presume then that you will look at other cases in order to determine if there is a pattern? Well, again, I can't talk about specifically this case, but there's no question that as part of any review, we would be very interested to know for a judge uh, as part of assessing their conduct, is this an isolated incident or have there been other instances where the judge uh, may have transgressed the high levels of expectations? And if so, uh, then appropriate measures will have to be taken. I guess that actually directs us to our next point, which is what are the measures that could be taken? What is the range? And is your conclusion binding? Well, um, we could look at it a number of different ways, but what's important to know is that for very good reasons to protect judicial independence, judicial independence, which is something that exists in the interest of the public, judges have a very high degree of security of tenure. They can only be removed by joint address of parliament. So the council's authority is to recommend whether or not a judge should be removed from office. The process that we follow, follow uh, consists of a a few steps. The first step, of course, is to inquire into the facts and then decide after a series um, of, of uh, an, in additional steps, including getting the judge to fully respond to the allegations, whether there needs to be a public inquiry into the matter. The public inquiries are rare, but there are currently two pending public inquiries. There is one that completed last year, and as a result of such an inquiry, the council can recommend that a judge be removed from office. You know, if you're, imagine anyone you know who is not in the legal profession, who is sitting at home, perhaps at work, listening to our conversation, listening to Alison Crawford's comments right beforehand about the comments that the judge made, um, including referring to the woman who was the alleged victim in this as the accused. People are asking themselves, I'm quite sure, why do you have to review? What, what is there to review why is there any question about his ability to adjudicate in cases like this? 
I know that uh, the, this case, which I can't get into the details of, raises a lot of troubling questions. But let's not forget that judges are human beings. There are uh, some 1,200 federally appointed judges in Canada. They render tens of thousands of decisions every year. They sometimes make mistakes. Those mistakes are usually corrected by the courts of appeal. It can go to the Supreme Court of Canada. And our system of the law in this country ensures that errors are reviewed. If it is a question of ability to sit, you cannot have on simply uh, on one incident without getting to all the facts, without knowing all the circumstances, simply say, gee, we would like this judge to be removed from office. Very importantly, the judge himself or herself, in any case, has to have an opportunity to respond. Anything less would be unbefitting an organization that acts in the public interest. I think most people would clarify a mistake, though, as a misinterpretation of the law, not something that goes as far as the comments made in this case. Well, you raise a very good question. Errors of law are one thing. Personal conduct and integrity are another. The CJC looks at these issues of personal integrity, integrity, conduct, to find out what is in the best public interest in any given case. A judge may well be able to redeem herself or himself by a getting coaching, doing remedial training. It's not a fait accompli that if you have engaged in some kind of misconduct, you should be removed from office. Assessing the gravity of a misconduct is a difficult exercise. I can't talk about this particular case, but the counsel in the past, where necessary, has recommended the removal of a judge. And you can be assured there is going to be a thorough review in this case. And finally, when might we know the, the outcome of that review? What is the timeline? Well, as in any case, it's important to proceed expeditiously. I'm happy to say 90% of all the complaints we do are, are resolved within three to four months. Some cases are more complex, but we do proceed expeditiously. It's in no one's interest for these things to drag out. It's certainly not in the interest of the judge, and it is not in the public interest that these things take too long.